Due to the graphic nature of this program, listener discretion is advised. Boxing Day. Celebrated right after Christmas, a day where we honor the greatest athletes in the sport of boxing. Legends like Joe Lewis, Muhammad Ali, Rocky Marciano, Sugar Ray Robinson, Iron Mike Tyson, Evander Holyfield, Oscar De La Hoya, Manny Pacquiao, Floyd Mayweather, and many, many more. We also honor fictional boxers like Rocky Balboa, played by Sylvester Stallone, and Makunoshi Ippo from the Hajime no Ippo anime and manga franchise. But most importantly, on this YouTube channel, we celebrate some of the greatest boxing video games of all time. Games like Nintendo's Punch-Out! and EA's Fight Night are two fantastic franchises, but one I absolutely adore is the Ready to Rumble boxing series. Featuring the legendary announcer Michael Buffer, it stars the Funkadelic Boogie Bro himself Afro Thunder as he spurs off against dozens of other over-the-top boxers. There were three installments in the series, Ready to Rumble Boxing in 1999, Ready to Rumble Boxing Round 2 in 2000, and... And... Oh god damn it! Merry belated Christmas and happy Boxing Day everyone! For this occasion, I felt that it would be the perfect time to bring back Awful Games, the original series that kicked off this YouTube channel, a series where I tackle some absolutely terrible games. There are a lot of shitty boxing games out there, but one in particular really gets me under my skin because this is a sequel to one of the greatest boxing game series of all time, Ready to Rumble, and that game I'm talking about is Ready to Rumble Revolution for the Wii. For over a decade, I've always wanted to rip this game into pieces, and now I'm finally gonna do it. So how bad is Ready to Rumble Revolution on the Wii? Well, let's find out. Okay, before I get into the game, I need to provide some context as to why this game is so bad. In 2006, Nintendo launched the Wii. It was different from the competition, the Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3. Foregoing a powerful HD console, Nintendo opted for cheaper 480p hardware that was basically an overclocked GameCube. But what also set it apart from its contemporaries was its novelty controller, the Wii Remote, along with the Nunchuck add-on. In the late 2000s, this console was insanely popular, going on to sell over 100 million units in its entire lifespan. This wasn't because of Nintendo's tried and true first party IPs like Mario and Zelda, but rather, it was attributed to the amount of casual games like Wii Sports, Wii Fit, Wii Play, and even Ubisoft's Just Dance series was quite popular on the system. The motion controls on the Wii made people feel like they were playing virtual reality for the first time ever. You could swing a bat, swing a golf club, pretend you're fighting with a sword, and even be a boxer. Third party developers saw what Nintendo was doing with their games and how they utilized the motion controls, and so they thought they could make a quick buck out of it. And this resulted in copious amount of shovelware on the console, so much so that they flooded the game stores everywhere. Boxing was one of the most popular games in Wii Sports, in fact it was so popular that Nintendo decided to make a dedicated boxing Wii game of their own in the Punch-Out! reboot. And this is where third party developers tried to make Wii boxing games of their own. A lot of these Wii boxing games really, really sucked, like Victorious Boxers Revolution and Facebreaker, but one game that sucked in particular was Ready to Rumble Revolution, released in 2009. The last Ready to Rumble boxing title, Ready to Rumble Boxing Round 2, was released in the year 2000, 20 years ago and 9 years prior to the release of Revolution on the Wii. 
Midway, the original developer and publisher of the first two games, had filed for bankruptcy a month prior to the release of this title. The rights to the series would be sold to Atari SA, which is not the original Atari from the 70s and 80s, but rather the former Infogrames, you know, the guys who published the Dragon Ball Z Budokai games. Being that this was Atari's first and only attempt at a Ready to Rumble installment, they did a really, really piss poor job. And so, here we are. The funny thing is that the game is called Ready to Rumble Revolution when it's anything but a revolution. What is this game gonna revolutionize? How to make games less fun? How to make games really shitty? In all seriousness though, it's most likely a pun for the Wii's original codename, Revolution. Yeah, a lot of games in this era were named after the console, the biggest one being the Wii series and sometimes using the Revolution name, you know like Pokemon Battle Revolution, Victorious Boxers Revolution, whatever. The intro and presentation look fine, and it's great to hear the iconic voice of Michael Buffer again, but really it isn't too exciting. And unfortunately, it only gets worse when you start playing. Getting into the main menu, the game has a decent amount of modes for what it's worth. And as you can tell, this has a creative boxer mode, which is pretty cool, and I'll get to that in a bit. But no amount of modes will save this absolute travesty of a game, if you can call it a game. So when you select arcade for the first time, you'll be asked if you want to play a tutorial, which is where you learn the controls. Well, kinda. All the punching and blocking controls rely on your movements. Very little buttons are used. Makes sense. For example, the game says to thrust forward the nunchuck to do a left jab, thrust forward the Wii remote to do a right jab, move the nunchuck left and then thrust forward to do a heavy left jab, move the Wii remote right and then thrust forward to do a heavy right jab, hold the C button to do the same, move the nunchuck or Wii remote up to do a left or right uppercut, hold Z and B while covering your face to block, etc etc. But here's the problem with this. The biggest problem with all of this, the controls are not very responsive. Every time you punch, no matter what you do, it doesn't always register correctly. This can result in really awkward controls that makes the game seem more tedious than fun. Mind you, this is only the tutorial, I didn't get even the slightest enjoyment out of this. Now let me ask you this. Do you really think you're going to remember everything the tutorial just taught you, especially with the poor response time the controls have? Yeah, I really really doubt that. Well, get ready folks, cause the gameplay is going to be really, really bad. If you remember in the original Ready to Rumble boxing games, you know that you need to build up your rumble letters to be able to perform more powerful punches. These will easily knock your opponent out of the arena for an easy KO. But with how terrible and poorly responsive the controls are, that can be a real pain in the ass to pull off. It's not impossible, but it's definitely not a fun experience to build up your rumble meter here. Oftentimes, you're going to be swinging and pushing your Wii Remote and Nunchuck like you're stabbing someone or deep cutting an animal. But no matter how hard you swing, thrust or whatever, it still takes a while for your opponent to lose health and get knocked out. Your best chances of building up your rumble meter is by repeatedly taunting with the A button. But then your opponent starts to taunt you back and they get rumble first. On top of the awful controls, the AI can also be really cheap, even if you're playing on very easy difficulty. Yeah, I shit you not. Very easy can also be hard, and it's largely thanks to the AI and terrible controls. Like if you build up your rumble meter, then hold A and punch your opponent, it could take a while to really knock out your opponent. But when your opponent gets his rumble meter full first, if you don't block quick, they'll knock you out instantly. And when you lose, you gotta try again. Of course this makes sense as an arcade style boxer, but imagine fighting the same opponent over and over and over and over again while dealing with the piss poor motion controls that will likely end up giving you very sore arms. And holy shit did it do that. I played for so long and captured footage to the point where my arms got really, really, really tired and sore. What kind of video game gives you sore arms? That is just pure, unadulterated BULLSHIT! BULLSHIT!
you're better off lifting weights a hundred times a minute. That's actually less painful and much more fun to do. I've tried normal, easy, and very easy difficulties. No matter which one I pick, I just couldn't beat arcade mode. When I got halfway, the opponents got tougher and I kept on struggling to play this boring and tedious and frustrating game with broken ass controls. The game is playable, but barely, just barely playable, and it isn't fun at all. It's a struggle, a real pain in the dick and balls. Oh, and when you get knocked out and the ref is counting, guess what you gotta do? You gotta shake the Wii Remote and nunchuck up and down repeatedly until you get up and you gotta really, really shake good. And that's if you get up because after you keep shaking and shaking and shaking and shaking and your character just doesn't get up at all, guess what? You shook your arms and you wasted all your time shaking your arms and now your arms are more sore than ever before. Holy shit, god fucking damn, this is bad. If you want examples of good motion controls in boxing games, look at Punch-Out on the Wii. It uses a rhythm slash drum style for motion controls while moving the nunchucks analog stick to duck and dodge. To me, this is the perfect Wii boxing game. It's very responsive, simple to get into, and it's ridiculously fun. And if you don't like the motion controls, you also have the option to use the Wii Remote sideways like an NES controller or the Wii Classic controller. And you know what's the most ironic thing about this? Punch-Out on the Wii was released the very same year as Ready to Rumble Revolution. The boxing game from Wii Sports is of course the most popular example, but it's more simplistic compared to Punch-Out. You're just swinging the Wii Remote and Nunchuck around like you're bitch slapping, but it's way more responsive than Ready to Rumble Revolution. You know, if they couldn't figure out how to make proper motion controls, why don't they give you the option to use regular controls, like the Classic Controller or the GameCube Controller? Would have made this game much more playable. By the way, don't you just love how there's a good portion of empty seats in this arena? The game is so bad, it's doing poorly in virtual attendance. That's really embarrassing. Now aside from the broken controls, the roster in this game is really disappointing. Literally no one from the first two Ready to Rumble boxing titles has returned. Where's Butcher Brown? Where's my girl Selena Strike? Where's Salua Tua or Mama Tua? Where's Jet Iron Chin? But most importantly, where the hell is Afro Thunder? How the hell are you gonna have Ready to Rumble without the most iconic character of the series? Now that is unbelievably BULLSHIT! The only character that remotely resembles Afro Thunder is this guy, Big Wallop. They put him front and center on the cover, but he's an unlockable character and he has zero relation to Afro Thunder. He just kinda looks like him. All the Ready to Rumble boxing titles were known for having stereotypical characters, and this game is no exception. But the big difference here is that the characters in the older titles were much more likable, especially Afro Thunder. These guys? I don't care about them at all. Except for maybe El Concertina, since he kinda looks like Scott Hall, aka Razor Ramon. There's a guy who looks like Sean White, a guy who looks like Angus Young from ACDC, a fat out of shape David Hasselhoff, a generic buff dude, Another generic buff dude, but it's an obvious parody of Arnold Schwarzenegger. And then there's a guy who looks like John Bon Jovi. Although, I think he's supposed to be Brad Pitt's character in Snatch? Now you notice that I didn't unlock all the characters in the game. Obviously, since I gave up halfway in arcade mode due to the god-awful controls. But the only way to unlock all these characters is by playing the main story mode, Championship. But before I do that, I wanted to touch on another feature in this game, Create a Boxer. As bad as Ready to Rumble Revolution is, I gotta give credit where credit is due. It's the first in the series to introduce character creation. All things considered, the character creation here is pretty solid. It's simple, yet you'll be happy with what you'll create. Sure, it's not as deep as, say, Soul Calibur or the WWE games, but at least you'll have someone else to play as that you want to play, not what the game gives you. So you can basically create Afro Thunder if you want. 
but I decided to create myself as a boxer here. Now some attributes are locked because you have to unlock them in championship mode in which you play as your created boxer. In championship mode you play as a rookie boxer, that being the character you created. You practice in the gym, do various types of training, and you square off against a random created boxer in the local gym you're at. Winning matches and training will boost your stats. A really fat businessman will then approach you and tell you that you got potential. Now this would have easily been a really cool mode, but they killed the game with the broken motion controls in the first place. The controls in this game are so bad, you'll even fuck up training. Yeah, even the training mini games are fucked. Every time you punch at the direction the screen tells you, you'll still mess up because the motion controls don't respond well at all. You're telling me that I have to go through all this bullshit just to unlock all the characters, man? Get the fuck out of here with that garbage. I am done. The graphics in this game look good, considering the Wii's underpowered hardware. I mean, it's no Tatsunoko vs Capcom, but it's on par with other budget Wii titles. The best looking character in this game is of course Michael Buffer. They made him look surprisingly realistic here. And then there's this. Yeah, hot babes during breaks. Now that's really nice to look at. As far as the music goes, it's very generic and forgettable. In fact, I really shouldn't even mention this. So, yeah. There are very, very few redeeming qualities to this game. And none of them have to do with the gameplay. So that's Ready to Rumble Revolution. It's absolutely terrible. It's a true stinker. The most boring, frustrating, and disappointing boxing game ever made. To make matters worse, it's a huge slap in the face to fans who were highly anticipating a new Ready to Rumble boxing title at the time. Nine years of waiting and this is what we get? And you want to know the saddest part about all this? We never saw a new Ready to Rumble boxing title ever again. Atari, you killed the Ready to Rumble franchise. You destroyed one of the best franchises of the Dreamcast and early PlayStation 2 era. How could you do that? Huh? What? No, th this can't be. No way. No way. You gotta be kidding me. You gotta be kidding me! You've got to be kidding me! The same developers that gave us some of the greatest wrestling video games of all time WWF No Mercy, WCW NWO Revenge, Def Jam Vendetta, Def Jam Fight for New York, The Ultimate Muscle Games, The Virtual Pro Wrestling Games, all those all time classics, they made this god awful pile of shit? Why, Aki? Why? Why? You hurt me, man! You hurt me! <laughs> Why? Why? <laughs> okay, so it turns out it's actually Aki Corporation USA, not the same folks from Japan who would later become Sin Sophia. Thank God! Jeez, that almost gave me a heart attack. So, it's not made by the same people who developed the legendary wrestling games, they just happen to share the same name. But still, they should have asked for some input from Aki Japan on how to make a good boxing game, because even though they were best known from wrestling games, they do have some experience with boxing characters in the Virtual Pro Wrestling series. Oh well, what can you do? So to close things up, Ready to Rumble Revolution sucks. What you should be playing instead are the first two games. Those are timeless classics. To this day, I still have fun playing those games. They're full of Kino, Soul, and good laughs. And you know, speaking of Aki Corporation, 2020 marks the 10th anniversary of my Aki Pro Wrestling 64 retrospective. So if you're new to this channel and you haven't seen it, I highly recommend doing so. It's one of my greatest works. I'm AliRx. And I want to wish you all a very Merry Christmas, 
Happy Hanukkah, Happy Kwanzaa, Happy whatever the hell you celebrate. Happy Holidays and Happy New Year 2021. Let's hope next year is a great year and a much brighter future for all of us. I'll see you on the other side. If you like this video and want to see more, hit that subscribe button and hit the bell to get immediately notified on the latest videos. If you like my content and want to support me, you can donate to my Patreon for just $1 a month. Go to patreon.com forward slash AliRx or search AliRx on the Patreon app for mobile devices. If you prefer a one-time donation, you can donate to my PayPal at paypal.me forward slash AliRx or send to AliRx at gmail.com on the PayPal app for mobile devices. There, you can donate any amount, even a penny. Links are in the description.